Today's lesson is about sample size. Your learning target or objective is, in this lesson you will learn to analyze when a sample size is appropriate to a given population. Let's start with a little review. So we talked in an earlier lesson about a random sample. And that means you have a sample where each member of the population has an equal likelihood of being chosen. It's important that your sample is random because then it would be valid or it would be unbiased. It would be good to use for a prediction. And then we have a biased or an invalid sample. These are not good to be able to use for predictions. It means that a sample has either over or underrepresented some characteristics of the population. So the biased or the invalid samples would be things like your convenience sample or your voluntary sample or a sample that um, is not representative of the entire population. Now the reason we need to make sure that we have a good sample is because statistics from a random sample can be used to estimate population, population parameters. In other words, we can make predictions about an entire population based on just the sample. Okay, so let's talk about what a sample is. So let's pretend that I was cooking a pot of soup. I could taste a sample, like a spoonful, of the soup to get an idea what the entire pot of soup would taste like. Being careful though, if it's something like chicken noodle soup, I have to make sure that I'm getting all the goodies at the bottom and not just the broth at the top. But it doesn't matter quite so much if it's something like tomato soup where there it's all nice and mixed together. But today, I'm wondering about the size of the sample. So, if my pot's really, really big, does that matter compared to if my pot is really, really small? Does my sample size change based on how big the population is? So I asked the question, would the size of the pot make a difference in the size of the spoon that I would use to sample it? And the answer is absolutely. The size of the population determines the size of the sample. So a baby spoon might be too small, but a ladle might be too big. So it depends on the situation. If you have a small pot, a baby spoon might be okay. If you have a huge, ginormous pot, then maybe you want a ladle. You don't ever have one sample size that fits everything. So for example, a 100 person sample, it would not work here or here, but it might work somewhere. It's not going to work here because if you remember back to your history classes, there are only 100 people in the Senate and if I wanted a 100 person sample, that means I would ask every single person. So that's not really a sample, that's really surveying the entire population. So no, a 100 person sample is not going to work for that. It's too big. In this case, a 100 person sample is also not going to work because that looks like a big city to me. And 100 people out of say a couple million people, that would be way too small. So you have to pay attention to how big your population is before you can determine what a good sample size would be. Samples should be large enough to represent the population large enough that individual values do not greatly affect the outcome. And sample size is determined by how accurate we want the statistic to be. In general, the larger the sample, the better your data is going to be. But you can't have it so big that you aren't able to complete the survey. So you have to be really careful. More is better, but not too much. Okay, so here we have a history class. Notice, history book. And we're trying to determine how many questions you think should be on the end of the year test. So you've learned an entire year of history and now it's time to take your final test and we wanna know how many questions. Well, we can eliminate a couple of these right off the bat. I think two questions that cover 
everything you learn is probably not realistic. I think that's going to be too small of a number. On the other hand, if I asked 200 questions, I'd certainly be able to cover the entire content, but I have to think about whether that's doable. Could a student answer 200 questions in a class period? I don't think so. I think in this case, that sample would be too big. So I've eliminated two of the options. One is obviously too small, one is obviously too big. So I have two other questions or two other options to look at. How many questions do you think should be on the end of the year test? Well, there's probably not a right or wrong answer here because I could make an argument for both. I could say if these five questions were something like essay questions, that might be good. I might be able to cover one per topic that we talked about, um, and it might take the kids a class period to answer that. On the other hand, 50, say, multiple choice questions, I could maybe make that work as well. I could certainly ask more content questions, um, and they could answer 50 multiple choice in a class period. So I guess it depends on these middle two what kind of a question you're going to ask, but I think you can make an argument for either one. All right, so now it's time for you to try some video questions. You are going to need a piece of paper that has your name, date, and period number on it. You're not really going to have any work, so you can just answer these questions. So question number one says, when would a sample of 100 be too big? And the other part of that is, when would a sample of 100 be too small? So I'm asking for a population. In what instance would 100 as a sample size be too big? And which other instance would a sample size of 100 be too small? Pause while you write out your answers. Come back for question two. This one is like video question number one. So number two says, Give me a time, a population, when a sample size of 10 would be too big. And alternatively, when would a sample size of 10 be too small? I'm looking for instances when those would not work. Write out your answer and come back when you're ready for question number three. Video question number three says, Give an example of a population where a sample size of 500 would be appropriate. Write out your answer. When you're ready to come back, we'll be on question four. Video question number four says, give an example of a population where a sample size of 5,000 would be appropriate. Pause while you're writing out your answer and then come back when you're ready for the last question. All right, last question, video question number five. A fitness club has 685 members. The manager is thinking about purchasing some new equipment and wants input from the members. Would it be better to sample 10 members, 60 members, or 300 members, and why? So when you are done writing out your answer, hold on to your paper. It's due at the beginning of class tomorrow.